Okay, now can you see me better? All right, well, good. Well, because I, I don't want anybody at the end of the day going, well, I could not see him. I couldn't see him. Or one of the men, I could hear him, but I couldn't see him. I was a pastor 22 years, so I know how that works. Brother Claude and his sweet wife, thank you. Good to see y'all. Always honored to be in the Claude Cone family presence. And uh, you just think how many times has Claude Cone heard some preaching and teaching and conferences over his lifetime. And then you think how many times has he had to put up with Swanberg, which has set him back several times. But through prayer and supplication, he's overcome it. So I'm glad that you're here, Claude. Uh, we go sort of way, way, way back. When I was at the seminary, I was the associate pastor to Joel Gregory. And some of y'all remember Joel Gregory. Yes, he has a voice and can preach. And he'd go out to Claude Cohn's church in Pampa. And weren't you out there at Pampa? And have that Bible conference in Pampa. <laughs> I'm good at it, ain't I? All right. But uh, anyhow, it's great to be with y'all. You know, I tell you what, there's times in my life where I just, I just, I don't know about y'all, but I love eating. I mean, just seeing these tables set up, ready for lunch, I'm already in the mood. I love to eat. Don't you love to eat? Uh, I love carbohydrates. I thought about writing a book called Carbs for Christ. Carb up for the master. Uh, the Bible said, Jesus said, I am the bread of life. It's in the Bible. I ain't making this up, man. <laughs> He's the bread. He is born in Bethlehem, which means what? House of bread. And remember the miracle, the two fish and the five loaves of bread. And remember what Jesus said. He said, pick up the carbohydrates. It's in there. And they picked up 12 baskets of carbohydrates. Now, what do you do with 12 baskets of carbohydrates? You wolf them down for Jesus. That's what you do. <laughs> you know, every time I, I love bread. I mean, to me now, bread is like dessert. And when, whenever I bite into bread, every fat cell in my body does the hallelujah chorus. I just sort of, every fat cell I, goes charismatic. I just, they're lifting their little hands to Jesus. Now, Baptists, we're not good at raising our hands too much. If we do, it's usually shoulder level. Only time we go above the shoulders if we're in a business meeting. That's about, that's about the only time we raise our hands to, you know, in a business. Have you noticed that? But, uh, but that's okay. But I'm glad. I'm, I, but I love eating and I, I love fellowship. My wife's always concerned about me, honey. I'm concerned about you. I worry about you. I do. Good night. And that woman, you know, she makes me do things to be healthy. I'm 57 years old. When I turned 50, she made me go and get uh, what I call the big physical. The big one. The big physical. You know what I'm talking about when you drink a gallon of lemonade? <sighs> That'll set you free. I remember when I, I drank the whole gallon, Claude. I mean, and I remember the logo on my gallon said, Go lightly which is false advertising, by the way. I mean, I drank the whole thing, and, and at 2 o'clock in the morning, I saw Jonah. I did, and you know, he looked like Forrest Gump. I had a vision, sir. He looked like, he looked like Forrest Gump. And, and he just stood there and said, I was running from God, and I got in my Bubba Gump shrimp boat, and then I fell overboard, and a big fish swallowed me up. Spit me out on the shore. I felt like I'd been bit in the buttocks, you know. <laughs> well, we're not in a church service really right now, do you? you know. You know, when you set the tables up, it looks like a fellowship hall, so let it go, let it go. <laughs> and I know some of y'all, you're praying, I'm praying for you. Well, I need the prayers, you need the practice. Bring it on, honey, bring it on. And don't write me a letter. Don't write Napier a letter. Or, you know, just write, write me a letter. I know what to do with it. And, uh, <laughs> and I remember, so, you know, I did the big physical. Well, oh, the next, okay, I drank all that. The next morning, I go up there, uh, Mr. Mizell, 
over there in Monroe, they have a regional uh, uh, Monroe Medical Clinic. There y'all. And it's new. It's over by the coffee bean if you've been back to Monroe lately. And I walked in there and had a little, the little lady that was a, a, a bluebird, redbird volunteer. You know how they are at the hospitals. And I walked in there and I said, I'm Dennis Swamberg. And she said, I know who you are. I said, well, I'm here and need to see my doctor. And, you know, we've been praying for you. And I went, I mean, do you, I mean, who's been praying? Everybody's been praying for you. I went, well, do they all know what I'm doing today? Oh, yeah, the whole staff. I went, you know, what about the Privacy Act? And then she said, we've all seen you on your television show, Swan's Place, except three of our people have not seen you on Swan's Place. I went, well. And then she said this, are you ready? But they're all going to watch today. <laughs> Jay, can you believe that? I said, ma'am, can I just go in a back room and just have my, you know, a little privacy? Pastors, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes you'd like some privacy. You know, because your lay people are there, you walk in, hi, brother, hi, brother Johnny, hi, brother Dennis, and you go, oh, Lord, you know, and you're going back in there, and nurse is working with you, I watched you on television, I'm going, oh, my gosh, you know, where's the privacy, you know, and they said, we don't have, you can't go back in the room, you have to sit over here in the lobby, well, when I go over to the lobby, there's about, about 20 people over there, and sure enough, when I'm walking over there, one little lady said, brother Dennis, who was on your TV show last night? Oh, they could sing. Oh, they could sing. I'm going, ma'am, I, I love music, but it's, I've got other things on my mind right now. <laughs> and then this man stood up and said, Brother Dennis, what are you doing here? I said, I'm here to make a movie. <laughs> we're going to call it the, the Incredible Journey. That's what we're going to call it. <laughs> well, if that wasn't enough, when I turned, uh, let's see, two years ago, a little over two years ago, my wife sent me to the doctor because she said, you're not breathing right, you're snoring and all this stuff. And I said, I'm fine. No, you're not either. And so I have to go take a sleep test. And next thing I know, I'm, I, they got this mask on me while I'm taking a sleep test, a mask for sleep apnea. And they, put, they wire you up and got the mask on you and they put your bed wires on your head, on your chest. And they go, okay, go to sleep. And I went, okie dokie. Okay, okay. And then, then they turn on all the oxygen. Just, and it's just, you know, if your mask ain't on just right, for those of you that don't have it, if it don't ain't on right, if it's not on right, it just, you know, it can leak. And, and I remember a little lady working there. She said, you're leaking, you're leaking. I went, oh, oh, you're leaking. I went, I'm leaking. And I went, then she said, your mask. I went, oh, good, okay. I did. I didn't know what was going on. Good night. So finally, I got it on there good. And I guess I finally went to sleep. And they woke me up at 5 o'clock in the morning. And, and I said, do you think I have it? And she said, well, I'm not the doctor, but you've got it. I said, well, what made you think I have it? She said, well, you quit breathing 51 times an hour. I went, good night. I said, did you give me mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation? She said, no, we just turned oxygen up, up through the tube. And I went, well, I appreciate it. And uh, so I'm heading home, and I have my machine. I got my machine, Rimstar, and uh, my hose and mask and everything. And when I got to the house, my boys, they're grown and gone. And my little wife, Laurie, I thought I'd have a little fun with my sugar babe, my honey love. And uh, so I walk in there, had my mask on, and had my hose just, just slinging behind me. And, I walk in there and I go, and there she was. I went, hey, baby, hubba hubba. <laughs> I got more oxygen now than I've ever had before. <laughs> you know what she did? Pulled my plug. <laughs> she pulled my plug. Now, here's the rest of the story. A year ago this January, last year, we were in bed and I had my mask on just right and it was 30 degrees outside in Monroe, Louisiana, which is cold, Larry. For Monroe, it's cold. And, but on, inside our house, we had the air conditioner on at 67. You know, I'm 57, my wife's four years younger, you know what's going on. The air conditioner's on 67. We're in bed, I got my mask on just right, and all of a sudden she goes, turn on the fan. I went, oh, turn on the fan. Oh, oh. 
My thought is, can't you turn on the fan? You know, I got my mask on, but you know how women are. They're bossy. You know, look at you. You know, and uh, I mean, you may not be a Martha, but you can turn into one real quick, you know, and get up and turn on the fan. Well, I take my mask off and get over there and, you know, and I've got a bad knee and I turn the fan on and, you know, it's just a going and a going. And, and then, uh, and I was very tender, very loving, Claude. And I said, baby, love, are you going through a stage? And she said, no, I'm not. Well, okay, okay. Man, I've learned this much. You don't ask something like that in private. They'll holler in private. If you're going to ask something like that, you ask that at a nice restaurant, real nice restaurant, because they ain't going to holler in a nice restaurant. So I took her to the Cracker Barrel. And at the Cracker Barrel, we were sitting there, and I said, baby, love. I said, how long does this last? And she said, I think four years. I went, four years? Claude was asking me by the table there just real quick. He said, Swan, how long are you going to go on the road speaking 150 times a year? How long are you going to do this? I said, at least four more years. Give me a hand clap for that one. Listen, I admit it. I'm an eight-track guy in an iPod world. I'm old, I'm old timey. I, did, I admit it. The voice impersonations I like to do, are there, a lot of them are dead and gone. Uh, J- Jimmy Stewart, he's been gone for a while, hasn't he? And if I do that for uh, college uh, students, they don't know what I'm talking about and unless I talk about the movie It's a Wonderful, Wonderful Life at Christmas time and they had to watch it with Grandma and Grandpa, you know. But I love Jimmy Stewart. I'm an eight, I'm eight track. Uh, I had an 11-year-old come up to me a, a year or so ago. And he, said, he said, were you alive during eight track? I went, yes, I was, son. Remember when you had those eight tracks, Jay? I had one in my glove box. Of my, look, your wife is smiling. She's getting tickled. It must have bringing back a memory. We had, we, we, I had, I had mine in my glove box of my 64 Chevy. And I had that Ray Price tape in there for the good times. I was a Methodist back then. Those were the days of ministry. And I remember he'd start singing, lay your head on my pillow. What an offertory. But uh, (laughs) remember those old eight tracks? Sometimes if the tape would be in there, it'd slip and you'd have to take a little box of matches and sort of slide under it to prop it up so the tape would catch. And if if it got out of line, you had to pull it out and pull that tape out and and let it suck back in there like Ross Perot. Here's the biggest sucking sound I've ever heard. It sucked out, you know. And come back and remember those days I was eight track and then they came out with them cassette tapes and I, I still like cassette tapes and uh, and a lot of my sermons are on cassette tapes and I'm always telling my boys don't y'all want to hear your daddy preach daddy we ain't got a cassette player I said well we're going to find one on eBay <laughs> and uh, but anyhow I'm eight track I admit it I'm, I'm old timey uh, and that's why I like to do John Wayne. He's always been a hero to me. Love the Duke. Always have and always will. And, you know, can you imagine if he'd been a preacher? All kinds of things in the Bible. Baseball's in the Bible. Genesis 1-1 in the big inning. And tennis is in the Bible. Bible says Joseph served in Pharaoh's court. <laughs> but, but anyhow, I'm eight track, I admit it. And I, I still like, you know, our church, we have good music and everything. We have three services. We have traditional, you know, got to have traditional. And then we have contemporary. 
contemporary. And my wife makes me go to the contemporary because she wants us to be, when the bo our boys are there, we're going to go to the one that they go to, which is at 11 o'clock. It's just packed out there in North Monroe Baptist Church in and, and, uh, Monroe, Louisiana. And Bill Dyer is our pastor and just awesome. And, uh, you know, they got that music and everything. And, you know, I'm not, a, I, you know, I can go with the flow, you know. I mean, it goes for 40 minutes. They stand for 40 minutes. They're standing and singing for 40 minutes. I think, can't they sit down and praise the Lord sitting down, you know? But I'll tell you what I do. I got a bad knee anyway, but I, I stand for the first song. Then I sit down and just raise my right hand and just sort of do like this while they're singing. <laughs> and they think I'm into it. But I get to sit down for 30 minutes. I just... <laughs> so you might want to pray about it. Uh, and at our church now, you know, like we don't even come forward for the decision time. That ain't right. And we, they don't come forward. They go out to a connecting area. And they say, if you want to receive Christ, meet us in the connecting area. And I'm going, I'm saying, that ain't right. That ain't right. That ain't right. Now, our church is the fastest growing church in Louisiana, but I don't care. Just think we could, how much better we could do if you'd make them come forward. And I tell my wife, they need to come forward. She goes, honey, hush. Just hush. I'm like, it ain't right. They just go out to the connecting area. And I'm going to tell you what, at our church, when you get saved, you go out to the connecting area, you get saved, you know what else you get? A mug. <laughs> you get a mug. I told my pastor, I said, I'd like to have a mug. I never got a mug when I got saved. I said, what do I have to do to get a mug? And he said, you got 10 bucks, Swan? I went. <laughs> I love telling that on him. I did it in front for him the other day. But you know what? The message doesn't change. The methods change, and we're reaching those young people. College students are coming, teenagers, and getting saved and hearing the gospel, and, and I love it. But I just never, but I still think they ought to come forward <laughs> and fill out a card, fill out a card, and give the card back. You don't get to keep the card. <laughs> but, you know, my daddy, he's down at Hyde Park in Austin. And, but even my daddy, he's 82 years old. And that several, he's got dementia and Alzheimer's now. But several years ago, even when he, when he was okay and everything, uh, I, one day he called me and I said, Dad, how's everything going? Floyd Leon and my mama, Pauline Bernadine. My dad said, well, I'm going to tell you what now. They slipped one in on us today. I said, what now, Daddy? They slipped one in on us, on us today. They slipped one in on you. What do you mean slipped one in on you? One of them praise songs. I said, now, Daddy, I don't want you being negative now. And you know what my dad said? He's 82. He said, it brings the young people. It brings the young people. I said, that's a great attitude. Mama got on the other phone and chimed in. We never say anything negative to anybody but you. <laughs> and Wanda, who does my hair. I went, <laughs> well... We know Wanda ain't going to tell nothing, is she? But, uh, <laughs> and I said, well, I, I'm proud of y'all. And then my dad said again, it brings the young people. I said, well, that's great. And I'm proud of you, Daddy, you know, because you don't need to be negative about that. It brings the young people. It's sort of like he's trying to convince himself, you know. <laughs> Well, then he said this. Are you ready? He said, Bill Olson called me. Remember Bill Olson? I know Bill Olson. He's a Lutheran. I know, I know that, Dad. He's a Lutheran. I know, Dad. His farm is below your mama's daddy's farm out there in Maynard and Elgin, east of Boston, Texas. I said, I know, I know him, Daddy. He's a Lutheran. <laughs> I said, I know that. He said, the Lutherans haven't been hit like we have with those praise songs. I said, Daddy, I'm in Lutheran churches and they have praise songs. He said, not like what we're going through. <laughs> and then my dad said this, are you ready? He said, he called me and said, Floyd, could you explain these praise songs to me? I said, well, Bill, it'd be like if I was out in the pasture and I came back to the house and I said, Pauline, the cows are in the corn. That would be a hymn. 
But if I came back and said, the cows, the cows, the cows are in the corn, the corn, 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 cows are in the corn, the corn, the corn, the cows are in the corn, that would be a praise song. <laughs> That's good, isn't it? You know what? A lot of you in here are with me. You're, you're in you're eight, I'm an eight-track guy in an iPod world, but here's my simple little message this morning. But I have a I am God. I am that I am that I am. He told Moses that way, way back then. Tell him that the I am sent you. I am that I am. I is that I is. He always has been. He always is. He always will be. He's that forever constant. And in every generation, the I am is very present and alive. He said, I am the bread of life. I, I, Tim Morrow was my buddy. And y'all may have gotten this book. I'm not for sure. But his book, Before Abraham, I Am. And, uh, and I like it because he talks about all these I am passages. You, what you need to do is you need to take this and preach it. Amen. He wrote it. You know, you might as well use it. You know, don't just use it for devotionals before you go to bed at night. Like I said last night, Fred Swank told me, once you hear it, it's yours. <laughs> he used to tell R.L. Allen in Fort Worth, who wrote all those books on funeral messages. I remember one time I was with him, Dr. Allen said, Fred, you just preached one of my funeral sermons out of my book at the funeral I was at. He said, well, I bought your book. What do you expect me to do? Have your funeral sermon for a devotional every morning? But, <laughs> but out of John, I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the door. I am the good shepherd. I am the resurrection. I am the way and the truth and life. I am the true vine. I am that I am that I am. And so I just want to encourage you today, all you eight trackers, or if you're high tech and sort of geeky, or if you are an iPad person, and when I came out with that DVD, they didn't have iPad yet. I thought that was something I was going to get as a senior adult. <laughs> well, that went right over some of y'all's heads. <laughs> I guess I should have just said it this way. It all depends. But anyhow, <laughs> I'm glad to know with a sense of humor that I can live this life confident that Jesus Christ is the I am. And I'm betting everything that I have all my life on Jesus. He's the only one that makes these claims. The best claims that I've ever read from any religion. And, and of who he says he is. I'm going all with him. I'm putting it all on him. I'm putting it all on the line with Jesus Christ. And here's the good news. When I put it all on him by faith... I received something. And just as the woman that touched him, he felt something come out of him. Because when you touch him by faith, you get something. You get him. You get the real thing. You get the I am in you. And it's hard for people to understand it. But by faith, when you receive him, you know. Gnosko, I know by experiential knowledge like this platform form thing is here. Experiential knowledge. Like Dr. W. Criswell would say, not oida, perceptive knowledge. No. Genosco. Experiential knowledge. <laughs> I know that I know that I know. I know in whom I have believed and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed against him against that day. I know. And that gives me a smile. That makes me laugh. That lets me be funny. That lets me have a place in the body of Christ. I know it's the funny bone. But you need it every now and then to remind you not to take yourself so seriously, but take God seriously. So I want to encourage you today, take me home with you. Go get that book I have out there called The Man Code. Got that DVD in there with it called... Uh, he called me champ. It's a one, one hour and one minute stories on Floyd Leon, my daddy. Hilarious. But if, you wanna, if you'd rather have a CD, uh, 
get a baseball buffets and a barrel of last to put with it, but you can get both for ten dollars. When normally the book is ten and the DVD is fifteen, that's a ten dollar special. You, you pastors, just you know, spend it out of the music budget, <laughs> and inform your music man that they, he's ten bucks lower than what he was yesterday. <laughs> and then, if you would like, here's some of my newest. I did this at Ronnie Floyd's church. Swans bail out with laughter. My, 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 my nest egg has been scrambled. My 401k has been fried, but I'm not going to be denied of living the good life in Jesus Christ. And it's there for you. They're all about 45, 50 minutes. And the good thing is when you get tired of me, just punch eject. <laughs> and once you listen to them, you can give them away as gifts and just tell them that you listened to them to make sure they were appropriate. Be a good steward. Living well, that's funny. And then in full detail, which I didn't have time this morning to go into, I'm an eight-track guy in an iPod world. And so it, those three are 20 when normally they're 15 each. And I can't, you know, 15 times three. I don't, I don't, all I can figure out is a tithe. But uh, <laughs> come by our table and take me home with you. God bless you. And I look forward to those of you that are going to stay for the luncheon. You're going to get a little bit more from the swan. God bless. Let's pray. Thank you. Thank you. Let's have a prayer. Father, we love you. Thank you that you are the, the joy of our salvation, and you're the joy of our sanctification, and you will be the joy of our glorification. Thank you that as we think about you and all that you have done and all you are doing in us and what you provide for us and how you love us, it does bring a smile to our face. And we thank you for this intimate relationship we have with you. So intimate that we can be so close with you that not only can we cry, but we can laugh in your presence. In Jesus' name, amen.